morning and welcome to St. Jacob Lutheran Church. We are so glad that you are here today. Today the, the gospel lesson is on uh, who do people think that Jesus is. He even asks his disciples, who do you, do you believe that I, I am? And he wants them to get them to confess their faith in uh, their Lord and Savior. In our sermon series, we are in the third week of Justified by Faith. And this week we're going to look at how God uh, declares us sons of God. We begin by singing our opening hymn, 416, and we'll sing in selected verses, everything but four.
that your church may worship you in peace and joy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Sunday after Pentecost is recorded in Zechariah 13, reading 7 through 9. In this vision, Jesus is pictured as the suffering, uh, uh, the suffering Messiah. The shepherd is stuck and the flock is scattered. The sound doctrine of the disciples' uh, feet fleeting into the darkness is fulfilled in this prophecy in the Garden of Gethsemane. And yet God makes a promise. Suffering for the gospel is his way of refining his children to bring them into the fold, to remove the purity so that by uh, that persecution it refines their faith and makes it even stronger. We read from Zechariah 13. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man who is my associate, declares the Lord of armies. Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered, and I will turn my hand against the little ones. This will take place in the whole land, declares the Lord. Two-thirds of those who remain in it will be cut off and perish, but one-third will be left in it. I will put that third into the fire, and I will refine them as silver is refined, and I will test them as gold is tested. They will call out my name, and they will answer them. I will answer them. I will say, This is my people, and they will say, The Lord is my God. This is the word of the Lord. We invite the, you to turn to Psalm 22, that's on page 71 in your hymnal, or it's on the screen. Uh, listen to the organist play the song on the refrain. I'll sing the first half of the congregation response. <laughs>
second lesson is from Galatians chapter 3, reading verses 23 through 29. This is also our sermon text for today. How can a Christian rejoice even in the face of suffering and persecution? The people in Galatia were being tested for their faith because they were told that the gospel wasn't good enough, that there was some action or law that they had to perform in addition to the gospel, and that just wasn't true. When we know that these sufferings are for the sake of Christ, who bought us and made us his heirs, and we confess Christ even in the face of persecution because we belong to Christ and look forward to an inheritance where no suffering, no evil, or no uh, persecution will take place. We read from Galatians 3. But before this faith came, we were held in custody under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith was revealed. So the law was our chaperone until Christ, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a chaperone. In fact, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Indeed, as many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is not Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or free, female, for you are all one and the same in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants and heirs according to the promise. This is the epistle of our Lord. Hallelujah, because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Hallelujah. <laughs>
Gospel is recorded in Luke chapter 9, beginning at verse 18. In a private moment, uh, Jesus offers the disciples an opportunity to confess their faith. Now, they confess that Jesus is the Christ of God. They are so bold in their faith that they really don't know what lies ahead. And uh, Peter says that, that he said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That is good that, that Peter was having. And yet, uh, in the days and um, uh, months and years ahead, they would be uh, understand what that meant and how Jesus would have to uh, bear uh, our sin on the, on the cross and um, then overcome that, and then they would, uh, those who would, would be given the crown of life. Listen to uh, this uh, comment. One time when Jesus was praying alone and the disciples were with him, he asked them, Who did the crowd say that I am? They answered, John the Baptist. But others say Elijah, and others say one of the ancient prophets come back to life. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, The Christ of God. He gave them a strict command not to tell this to anyone. He said, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and experts in the law. He must be killed and be raised on the third day. Jesus said to all of them, If anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. This is the Gospel of, of our Lord. Uh, please stand and, oh, sorry. Please be seated. <laughs> my eyes jumped ahead, sorry. Uh, the next ten, we'll sing the next ten, 536. 536.
according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Galatians chapter 1, 3 through 5. Friends in Christ. About 50 AD, Paul wrote uh, this letter of Galatians to uh, Christians who lived in the Roman province of Galatia. On his first mission trip, the Lord used Paul to bring many Galatians to faith through the gospel of Jesus Christ. After Paul left, a group of Jewish uh, Christians called Judaizers began to promote false teachings among these new uh, uh, Galatian converts. The Judaizers insisted that G these Gentile converts to Christianity observe certain laws. They were falsely teaching that faith in the gospel was not enough. Obedience to uh, ceremonial laws must be added. This tension between Paul's audience is divided into two divided them into two groups. One group, uh, the Gentile Christians, heard, received, and believed the gospel message of Jesus. They continued to live in the gospel that God had revealed to them and that Paul had shared with them. They believed that they were justified by faith in Christ alone. The other group, the Judaizers, comprised of some very serious uh, and sincere Jewish Christians, insisted uh, that these new Gentile converts must obey the law of Moses. The vocal minority was verbally intimidating the silent, uh, faithful majority and gaining comforts to their distorted gospel. Now, they didn't reject Jesus uh, uh, the faith in Jesus entirely. They insisted that the law be added to make faith complete. Paul depends, uh, 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 defends the gospel of uh, uh, and the, the doctrine of salvation by faith alone without adding any law or act. Previously in our sermon series, Justified by Faith, we have seen how Scripture proclaims no other gospel. And how even though we are Americans, we live like Christians. Today, Paul is asking us to examine the way we come to faith. Earlier in Galatians 3, Paul asked these direct questions. Do you receive, did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish, having be, begun by the Spirit? Are you now trying to reach the goal by the flesh? Paul's obvious answer is that we receive the Holy Spirit through faith, not through the law. Clearly, no one is just as declared righteous before God through the law, Paul says in the first verse of this chapter. For he quotes the, the Lord's words in Genesis. So, when, uh, uh, so also Abraham believed in God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. To everyone who believes that uh, they are saved solely through the grace of God in Jesus. Paul says, you are all sons of God. Though you were once in prison, now you are all sons of God. That is, legitimate heirs. In biblical times, daughters did not have an inheritance. And so this relationship of sons of God means more than just being born into the family. It means that you'll inherit something. And the sons inherited the property. It's not a knock against uh, the daughters, and, and the, the relationship is there. Uh, but you have to understand that that's the, the meaning. Before faith came means that uh, before Jesus our Savior arrived in this world, you and I were prisoned by the law. The Mosaic law had a number of inherent weaknesses. Uh, prior to our text, Paul mentions four weaknesses of the law. And then what about the law? It was added for the purpose of revealing transgressions until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. It was transmitted through the angels by the hand of a mediator. First, the law was not primary. It says it was added to something that was a superior or already in existence. It was always secondary in nature, having a supportive role. About 430 years after God promised a savior to Abraham, the law of Moses didn't save people because the patriarchs believed before the law was given on Mount Sinai. <clears throat> Second, the law deals with sin and transgressions, not salvations. Specific instructions about uh, worship life and food selection serve to separate Israel from heathen uh, or, or uh, heathen nations. These rules 
hemmed them in, hedged them in, and protected them as God's special people. God's law showed Israel its sin. Paul says this about the Mosaic law. Now we know that whatever the law says is addressed to those who are under the law, so that every mouth will be silenced and the whole world will be subject to God's judgment. For this reason, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by works of the law. For through the law, we become aware of our sin. The law can teach us about the need for righteousness, but it can't give it. The law cannot provide salvation. It can only point to Jesus as, our, as the Savior. The third weakness of the law is that God intended it to be for a limited time. The law of Moses was enforced only until uh, for a limited time, and that time ended when Jesus came into this world. It existed only to help the promise along. Before faith came, we were held in custody under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith was revealed. In the Old Testament, the Mosaic law kept the Jews under guard just as a military garrison protects a town. It stood like a sentry until it was relieved of its duty when Christ came and fulfilled it. Under the law, uh, the Israel was pictured as a prisoner, hemmed in and locked up. It restrained them and burdened their lives. The law distinguished the, 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 the Jews from the other nations, the Gentiles, and it erected a barrier so that the Jews would not be scattered over the nations and lost entirely and so that the seed or Christ would come into the world. So the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. In Greek, the word for put in charge is paidakagos. It refers to a slave that was not a, a boy's teacher or disciplinarian, but who cared for the boy whenever he left home, like when he was walking to and from school. He made sure that the lad stayed out of trouble and uh, arrive safely. He, uh, similarly, the law acted like a chaperone. It was only there to lead uh, us until God came and fulfilled his gospel promise. Three times in two verses, Paul expresses the negative, subordinate character of the law. He says it's guarded, confined, and supervised. The point is the immaturity of the boy who is rid of the garden of the guardian only after he becomes mature. The law required a mediator was the fourth weakness. A mediator stands between two parties, in this case God and the people. When the Lord issued the Mosaic Covenant on Mount Sinai, it involved two parties, or two sides, and it had certain conditions attached to it. A mediator served as a go-between between two sides of a covenant. While the Lord is faithful to his side, the people of Israel were not always faithful. And when they worshipped the golden calf and rebelled against the Lord, they broke his covenant. This is when a mediator becomes necessary, and that mediator in time became Jesus Christ. So a lamb and its mother uh, passed by a pig pen uh, every day on their way to the pasture. <coughs> And watching the pigs wallow in the mud seemed like a great thing for this little lamb. On an especially hot day, the lamb asked his mother, May I jump the fence and wallow in the cool mud? And she replied, No. And the lamb said, Why not? And the mother said, She don't wallow. Well, the lamb uh, wasn't satisfied with that. He thought his mother had no reason to refuse. And so, when mom, our mother lamb, was out of sight, the lamb ran to the pig pen, jumped the fence, and oh, he felt the cool mud on his feet, his legs, and his stomach. It was really refreshing. And after a while, he decided, well, he had better go back to his mother. But he couldn't. He was stuck. The mud had caked to his wool, which was heavy, and he couldn't, it was so weighed down with that heavy, sticky mud, his pleasure had become his prison. He was a hostage of the mud. He cried out, and the farmer and the owner, and the, the owner came and rescued him. When he was cleaned and he returned to his fold, his mother said, Remember, sheep don't wallow. <laughs> Sin is like that. 
It looks so inviting. So drinking excessively, uh, or to have an affair, or to try drugs, it appears easy to escape whenever we want to, but it's not. Pleasure becomes our prison. By nature, we are all hostages stuck in the mud. Paul doesn't say in his text, you are all sons of God because you were circumcised. Listen to the law and follow its regulations. He says, you are sons of God because you are justified by faith. The Judaizers really valued the law more highly than the gospel. They attached more importance to obeying the Mosaic laws and rituals, such as observing festivals and dietary regulations. They believed that not only should one believe in Jesus, but he or she must obey certain laws to be saved. So don't go back like the Judaizers and return to the law that imprisons and suffocates and enslaves. Our human nature though, wants to participate or cooperate in our salvation in some way, right? By nature, we think that we have to do something to be saved, that you and I uh, have to participate. So some religions teach that you have to be baptized in a certain way. Remember the exact circumstance in which you came to faith, uh, or uh, be moved or shaken with an experience, a religious experience, to be considered a true Christian. Others teach that a good Christian will not drink, dance, or uh, eat meat. Thank God we have, uh, do not have to reach a limit of good works, follow a certain standard of behavior, or live by a certain set of rules in order to be, to be saved. As believers in Christ, we don't need to do anything on our own, but simply receive God's grace. Paul says, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. The Galatians were not members of God's chosen nation of Israel. They were Gentile sinners. But now they were no longer aliens, foreigners, or strangers to the Lord. But through faith in Jesus as their Savior, they are sons of God in an intimate, genuine relationship with their Father. In Christ alone, God has become the Father of many sons. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. If you are a son, then you are also an heir through Christ. You are sons of God because you are baptized in, in, into Christ. Paul isn't making that status as baptized as sons conditional as if it was, were only through baptism that we were saved. Uh, Paul points to the Galatian Christians to baptism, though, as the day that we, they received faith into their hearts. When we were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized with water and the Word, and we were baptized into the Holy Christian faith. When you were baptized into Christ, you also were clothed with Christ. You put on Christ as a garment of salvation. And so just as a garment surrounds the one wearing it and identifies its, uh, his appearance in life, so the person baptized in Christ is entirely covered with Christ and uh, in, his, in, in the salvation he brings. When baptism doesn't, while baptism doesn't completely remove uh, our original underwear of sin, death, and the devil, it provides us with a new set of clothes, so to speak, uh, as we put on Christ. Isaiah asserts, and listen to his comparison uh, or description of this, I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul will celebrate because of my God, for he has clothed me in garments of salvation. With a robe of righteousness, he has covered me. We passively receive what God and Jesus actively gave, a robe of righteousness. To put on uh, Christ in the gospel is not simply like putting on a, a new change of clothing or uh, uh, changing our appearance. It is being reborn or becoming a new creation. Listen what, to what Paul said in Ephesians. As far as your former way of life is concerned, you were taught to take off the old self, which is corrupted by its deceitful desires, and to put on the new self, which has been created, created to be like God in uh, righteousness and true holiness. Faith in Jesus clothes us so that God doesn't see our sins and shortcomings, but only Christ's perfect righteousness earned for us on the cross. And this is the exchange that is expressed in God's word. Jesus took on our sin while we receive his righteousness. 
God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As such, you are all one in Christ. In baptism, we are clothed like the garment uh, with the garment, the Christ garment of uh, perfect righteousness. And since you are all sons of God by faith and clothed with Christ uh, righteousness in baptism, all the distinctions of the law are wiped out. All Christians are alike in their spiritual status. Everyone has been baptized and declared righteous. None are higher, none are lower, none are richer, none are poorer, none are worse, none are more, none are less. In every respect, they are exactly as one person in Christ Jesus. In the world, there are many differences in nationality, status, uh, stations, and roles. In God's house, all believers are uh, equally sons of God. Unity in Christ transcends ethnic, social, and sexual uh, distinctions. You are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You belong to Christ because you were born, in, not born, not because you were born into a certain bloodline or possessed by the law, but because you trust in God's promises that Jesus paid for your sins through His atoning work on the cross. God covered us in Christ's blood and righteousness, so that the scars of our sins are no longer seen. The real relationship with Abraham doesn't rest in one's nationality or good works, but in faith. If you know Jesus as your Savior by faith, work by baptism in the Word, then you are Abraham's heir and his descendants. As Abraham's seed, we are heirs of God and declared uh, justified by faith alone. Faith in Jesus and the Spirit in baptism makes us sons of God and saves us, not by works of law. Before the two-sided Mosaic covenant was sealed, the Lord made a one-sided covenant with Abraham. How infinitely better and more secure is it to have one party making one, a one-sided agreement, particularly when the maker of that promise is the absolutely faithful and reliable God of heaven, says Armin Panning in the People's Bible. In pure grace, without any conditions or stipulations, God simply announced to Abraham, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless your name and make your name great. I will make your descendants like the dust of the earth, broken, worthless, despairing, and lying hopeless before God. That's where you and I were be, uh, when we were under the law in sin. But this is how God's love for us was revealed. God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we may live uh, through Him. Baptism has replaced circumcision as the means of which God's grace comes to us. And while circumcision was uh, uh, limited to the Jews, baptism is offered to all of us. And while circumcision uh, was a, uh, limited to um, the male tribe, baptism is for um, both boys and girls, or men and women. Baptism is offered to all. Being baptized into Christ, clothed with Him, and believing in Him, makes you God's sons. We are, he calls us sons, and we believe it. Amen. Passing of uh, the, the surpassing greatness of Christ uh, makes us members of His church. We. Uh, Stands for the Apostles' Creed, and we will say that together. That's on page 41, or it's on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified.
You may be seated for the honor. We will uh, use the prayer on page 127, that's the uh, prayers for Sundays after the Pentecost, we'll say that responsibly. There are quite a number of uh, personal prayers uh, that, and, uh, and yet we will do that in that context of that prayer. O Lord, our God, you are wise and beautiful, good and gracious. Your mercies are new every morning. Each day you open your hand and provide for the needs of your children on earth. We praise you for every grace and blessing. Strengthen your church in all the world. Let your comforting message of salvation in Christ Jesus be proclaimed to troubled souls everywhere. Use our ministries and offerings to extend your healing and your hope. We bring you our requests for the various structures of our society. Bless our national, state, and local governments. Grant us civil service who are worthy of honor and respect. Grant prosperity to our businesses and industries. Give employers a sense of fairness toward their workers and employees a feeling of joy and pride in their workmanship. All Help us find satisfaction in all work well done. Invigorate the schools of our land. Give success to every effort that helps students read, think, and communicate in ways that will promote an informed and responsible citizenry. Arouse curious minds to discover the wonders of your created work. Who bless teachers and students to pursue excellence. Strengthen the families of our country. Give fathers and mothers a renewed commitment to be good parents. Give children and young people the wisdom to regard their parents as your representatives. Uh, dear Lord, 
to come to the bedside of Wayne Genesby, who uh, fell last night. Uh, visit him and comfort him with, his, with your healing power. Uh, with your tender touch of your grace, help Wayne uh, look to you as the heavenly physician that uh, can heal um, all diseases and injuries. We pray that he would find patience to bear his affliction and yet know that all things work out for the good of those who love you. And finally, we uh, ask uh, guidance and uh, help uh, and support uh, to uh, Tyler and Amanda Webb. Uh, Tyler is about to be deported, deployed, deployed, deployed um, into the military service um, and in a longer capacity. Keep them in your loving mercy and protection. Give them a rich measure of the Holy Spirit to strengthen their bond of marriage and, um, and to realize that no matter where they are or how far apart they are, that you will never leave them or forsake them and help them to, return, to turn to you in times of need. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petition. Gracious Father, we ask you boldly as Jesus taught, with the confidence that you will hear and with the faith that you will respond for our welfare. Amen. Amen. We join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, 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 who art in heaven, now be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For mine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the next day of 390.
Protect and comfort us in all temptation, and bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
discuss one yeah. <laughs> and the brief Miller Memorial Committee uh, will reschedule because it is in conflict with the annual meeting and uh, we haven't received a sign yet so really there isn't much uh, uh, to, to meet with or discuss at, at that time. Um, any announcements from the group? The meeting begins at 530. 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. Yeah. Okay, um, I'll leave you with the nod of the are all sons and daughters. Recognize that you really, that's a special relation to the heirs of God. Uh, I'll reach you.